This week, we're casting off from the familiar rhythm of our lives on the ocean towards something a little bit different. We're getting ready to put Inner Bloom, our Adams 35, into a marina for three weeks, something that we've tried to avoid as much as possible in our first season as full-time cruisers. We're young, we're poor, but we are full of excitement, which meant that we had to sell everything we own to do this. The last of it. Our entire life was in here. <laughs> our entire life was out there. <laughs> and we have to work really hard to stay out here, but it's so worth it. The price of a life afloat? It's more than just financial. It's a lifestyle built on compromise. We steer clear of alcohol in restaurants, we ride our bikes where we can, and rely on hitchhiking to get around. Nelly Bay! <laughs> we endure the restless nights in rolly anchorages. Oh, I'm kicking myself that I got all that food sprouting. It's flying. And zoot back and forth on the tender with jerry cans of water and diesel. One <laughs> LOB. <laughs> oh, this is it. The old school, salt in the veins existence of true yachties. <laughs> It's uncomfortable, often maddeningly inconvenient, but teeming with joy and rich in moments that make it so worth it. I got this balaclava from the off shop yesterday and I love it! I look like Cam the Frog. And I look like an idiot! We love it. The most expensive way to travel for free. And recently we've opened up the opportunity for support on making these videos via Patreon. We want to thank all members of our Patreon family, whether it's a few dollars towards being able to wash our clothes or a little bit extra to soothe my withering soul as I sit inside the boat for 30 hours a week to make these videos. Every bit counts and we appreciate it big time, so thank you. If you'd like to become a part of the community, you can find the link for that in the description. But one of the more poignant sacrifices of this lifestyle is the distance it creates from family and friends. When we set sail from our home port of Ballina, we didn't just leave behind a coastline, we left behind the people and places that have become our home. Heading back for a best friend's wedding and a reunion with family on the south coast is more than just a mere pit stop for us. It's a return to the roots we've temporarily forsaken in pursuit of the unknown. What you see on this channel is the real deal. We share it all. The adventure, the heart-pounding excitement, the fear, the love, the lessons, the warmth of discovery, and the moments that make us feel like we're really pushing our luck. But it also means that moments like these, returning home, are rare and precious. Like beating to windward in the rain on no sleep to arrive at the perfect anchorage with a sandy bottom on a windward shore with coconuts already open, preferably. <laughs> As young and seriously budget conscious yachties, planning this journey has been a logistical nightmare. We have our bearded dragon to consider, who's unable to fly domestic. Not because she has a phobia of planes, but because she's a bearded dragon. So I'll be making the trek from Townsville to Brisbane by train, then hopping on buses from Brisbane to Ballina, Ballina to Sydney, and finally Sydney to Canberra. That's 2,171 kilometers of public transport over three days with the bearded dragon. Meanwhile, Josh scored a budget-friendly flight, with the trade-off being some extra work on the boat while I'm en route. But that leaves us with one final knot to untangle. Where to leave Inner Bloom? After too many tales of theft and damage to unattended boats in the Townsville area, we knew we couldn't afford to leave our home unguarded for three weeks, let alone all our possessions and devices and camera gear. So enter Magnetic Island Marina, a safe haven for us during one of their busiest months of the year just after the Maggie Island Yacht Race Week. So somehow, through all the madness, it's all come together. This crazy life on the water is a constant pull between freedom and responsibility, tight budgets and desires, nomadism and family. This journey ebbs and floods, carrying us between the lives we've left behind and the horizons we continue to chase. <laughs> Oh my god, I gotta put that song on. I have to put that song on. Thank you. Josh and I love walking through marinas or taking the tender through the marinas and having a look at all the boats. I'll tell you what, this is the first marina that I've seen that has bluer water than yeah. the island or water surrounding it. Yeah. It is insane. Yeah. It's a pretty beautiful marina. Yeah, it's really peaceful too. I really like the layout. Yeah. And I like that it kind of is um, set into this Peppers Resort area, so it's really private. And it's actually just really nice to be in a marina with lots of greenery around. 
Yeah, this is nice. I'd stay here. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to stay here. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's going to be our first time off the road in eight months, is it, babe? It's going to be scary because we love Inner Bloom so much and everything that we own is on that boat. And yeah, the thought of leaving it for over a month is a little bit sketchy. But walking through this marina, I feel like she'll be pretty damn okay. Yeah, this is definitely a, um, a place I'd feel comfortable leaving a boat. Yeah. Oh, that's good. No immediate danger. Did you go op shopping? What did you get? Oh, okay. One of my all time favorite books is The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. This is the book that got me into Ken Follett and um, it's pretty much been love ever since and I've wanted Josh to read it. So this is for you. Previously, I used to joke to Phoebe that um, if she went off early to go to bed, she'd be getting in bed with Ken. Which I would be. This is not a paid promotion for Ken Follett books. And then also this heart wrenching book called Atonement. It's got tomato sauce all over it. It's blood. Oh, this is Kathy. <laughs> yeah, we'd love one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Some things, some, some people teach us shit we don't want to know. It's still a lesson though, well, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, packing in a bloom up. She's going to have three weeks in the marina here while we jet back down south via other means of transport, much faster means of transport to see some family and go to a wedding. A big list of sort of jobs ahead to get the boat ready to sit for three weeks. It's nice to be back in a marina. Um, I'm jumping into my jobs really hard so I can get everything done and then go and jump in the pool and relax and enjoy this really magical spot. It's, um, it's, it's pretty cool here. It's really, really cool. So yeah, stoked to be here. Just gonna be slapping on a little bit of Kiwi grip. I'm not gonna film the whole thing. It's a bit sort of hard when you're doing it all by yourself. You just wanna kinda get through it. There's a lot to do. Um, but I'm doing this for a safety perspective because the last time we put this on, it didn't get a good result. So I've got half a tin there. I'm just gonna slap over it and see if I can get a little bit of a rougher texture because making passage home, I wanna have the boat as safe as possible. Rather startling experience. Someone's moving their power boat in here and I was down below cleaning the fridge out and I heard bang, 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 bang. And I looked out over the sugar scoop and the power boat's coming along um, our transom and the side of him has gotten caught on the, on the ladder and it's like, he's dragging up along the ladder. So he's bent, bent, the, bent the swim ladder pretty bad. Um, yeah, so he was just dragged along there. I mean, not so bad because it's a steel boat, but it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit annoying to have the ladder all bent. We call this bush mechanics. When you look at all the others, that's spot on. That one. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm more than happy with that. So I've just finished up with Cliff. I've got the ladder. I'm on the pushy. And um, yeah, going to ride back to the marina. I'm actually glad this happened so I got to meet Cliff. He's a real legend of a bloke. What has upset me the whole, more so about this is the the driver of the other vessel's response to the whole thing. He just couldn't understand from a pers perspective that this is my home and I try to keep a really nice ship in good condition. And at the end of the day, it's not that the ladder got bent. I could have probably lived with that. I would have tried to fix it myself, but just that he didn't think it was a, a anything that was worth even giving attention to. He said it was out 10 mil, but <laughs> that's his 10 mil. I'd hate to see the way he builds a house. <laughs> Um, but yeah, anyway, it's all good. It's all sorted. And I'm, I'm happy for it. I've amber ended the chain. Also painted meter marks at five meter intervals again. I've got a bit of um, gear here that I'm going to be re-spooling re one of my trawling reels. It's a Pen 850 and this is on a sort of bottom bashing type, type rod. It's quite short and stout you probably know a lot more about it than me i just thought i'd involve you in this because um you're equally as invested in the journey as i am for improving our trawling so we can get a bit more fish on board the last three big hookups we've had whilst trawling we've all we've lost the fish so it's it's time to sort of get a little bit more serious i've invested a little bit of money and i'll show you what i'm gonna do i've invested in 400 meters of 65 pound braid and that's going to go on here so i can be trawling two lures at once I've also gone and bought three more lures uh, that I'll show you in a second. I'm kind of going to be 
doing a little bit of a test for us having one rod trawling a lure at about six meters and another rod trawling a lure at about two meters. Typical uh, Qantas lure with the big bib, that's gonna be going down to six meters. And then I got recommended these by Brett. So I'm gonna be running one on each rod and I'm also gonna give these a birthday, put some new stainless uh, split rings on them and then also some single gang 5.0 hooks. Yay! <laughs> Just first snapper for the day. Yeah, first snapper day, you have to say that. Huh? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> then we're gonna have a quick dive for some mussels and other fish that are hanging around the breakwater. Let's see what we can get. <laughs> You're so excited. <laughs> Okay, you keep walking. I only just started filming a second ago. <laughs> just about to pick Phoebe up. She's um, arriving on the ferry from Townsville. And that wraps up 30 hours of travel for her across what, like two trains, a cab, a bus, and a ferry. And just you wait, she'll get off this ferry full of life and smiling. She'll be bloody exhausted, but she'll still be stoked. It's She's got some incredible willpower, this woman. And pretty much over, I think it's been three nights now, she would have got no more than eight hours sleep. So, She's um, running on empty. I've got a shower there ready for her. Some, some breakfast cooked up and yeah, should, as soon as she's ready and comfortable, we're gonna throw the lines and get going. Next stop, Cape Upstart on the way to Airlie Beach. He has been carrying a humongous suitcase, the laptop so she can edit a backpack, Sonia, another bag. I'm just amazed that she hasn't lost anything on the way. It's hard work, especially when you're that tired. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I must be dead. You're an angel. You actually made it. Oh, I'm just so small. <laughs> Love you. Queensland. <laughs> In all your winter clothes. I know. <laughs> so many regrets. Oh, this is so cool. I can't tell you how good it is to be back. I'm a bit dazed right now. Sonia's happy. But just the smell of a marina, smell of boats, barnacles, sound of swallows. <laughs> Building. Yeah. Let's get you some food and background of a shower. Hills in the background. Yeah, I need to have a shower. I need to drink some water. I need to do a lot of things. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, my God. It feels... Yeah. Let me get a whiff of it. Yep. <laughs> oh, I missed it. It's bigger than I remember. Yeah, same. <laughs> oh, yeah, I redid the non-slip too, so... What, did ya? Yeah, and so, you know, I did run rays around the boat. Oh, wow! Oh, baby, the boat is so clean, you did such a good job. My pleasure.
We're kicking off. We're on our way. I'm so excited. Phoebe's about to eat. <laughs> about to eat some food. And Go to bed. Probably have a sleep because I haven't slept in two days. I think I'm just running on psychosis or something. I don't know. Cool mints. Some cocos. I had a lot some. of cool mints on the way. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, it's it's exciting. It's a beautiful day. It's so hot. Sonia is frothing. Yeah. She's tired. She's yeah. She's probably a little bit confused as to why she was hidden away for two days. But she just slept because it was pretty cold down there. Um, yeah, I can't tell you how nice it is to be back here, back on the boat. I was telling Josh, it feels like when we were living in Byron and. We would come and visit the boat. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't radio last time. We were coming out of Nelly Bay Harbour, and I got absolutely surfed by some ferries. So, in a bloom on one six, exiting Nelly Bay Harbour. Over. In a bloom, Arcadia. Arcadia, this is in a bloom on one six. Go ahead. Yeah, we're just halfway through the leads coming in into Nelly Bay. Thank you very much. And that's what it felt like coming back to the boat today. Unfamiliar, so different, so much bigger inside than what I remember. But yeah, just happy to be back with my man. And I'm so glad that it's a beautiful day that I get to say goodbye to Maggie Island. Okay, if I stand by on the port side of this harbour, is that enough space for you? Over. Yeah, you can stay where you are. I'm fine, thanks, mate. Okay. Glad I didn't have a repeater last time. Um, I came out of here, there were three ferries coming in. I had no idea I had to call on the radio. So yeah, that was, I feel, I feel accomplished. It's a good start to the passage. Just had a couple of good bites on, um, on the rod. I could look in the water and see the fish that was going for it, but it just didn't, didn't set a hook. So, that's okay, a little bit unfortunate, but I'm getting the, um, oh, he's a sea snake coming up. Check this out. to get this tuna up on deck it's been bleeding for a little while now so I'm gonna fill it up and chuck it in the fridge maybe we might want to have some of that when she wakes up or we might have some for dinner but yeah let me show you this fish Come back here. We've actually just gotten a little bit more wind, so we're we'll going to do this now. The wind is a little bit shifty still and was causing our head sail to rub against the first spreader there as the wind was coming more over our bow and that's causing a lot of wear on the sail. I've already done a patch there that's been blown out by that, so I just thought I'd save the sail and put it down. As we come around Cape Bowling Pin, we're going to cut back in a little bit um towards the i think it's south east so we'll be able to use the available wind that's east northeast a lot better um at the moment we're still going east so 
yeah it's all coming together so i've just woken the beauty she's here she's alive it's um 4 20 so she had a five hour little rest and probably be about five or six hours until we get there so that'll probably help her get to sleep again a little bit later welcome back to reality Five hours, and I don't think that I know that. That sounds about right. How was it? Good. <laughs> Is it nice leaving with the motor going? Mm, yeah, I didn't even notice it to be honest. Uh, but the rocking and the sound of the motor, I felt like I was in the womb again. <laughs> oh, I'm really happy for you. <laughs> Thanks, baby. You deserve it. You reckon you could have slept through all night until yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, yes, okay. but luckily I'll be able to do that in five hours. So. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. The sun is setting on this glorious day. We are going to have Tudor for dinner. I've gotten all the nav lights on now. Phoebe's down below getting ready to cook up. She's like, I'm going to make a pasta and I'm like, oh, I'm really sorry to inform you, but we have absolutely no provisions whatsoever pretty much rice or dried goods that's it um we're still running with the motor on obviously the number one jib and our full main up i think the wind's probably going to drop out overnight and by the time we get there the main sheet is let out a little bit to catch a bit of wind because it's coming over our beam now same with the the jib but we i kind of got a little bit of chop that is causing the boat to bounce up and down and as it bounces up and down the sails are sort of back filling a little bit but that's okay yeah, it's going to be a gorgeous little sunset tonight. Pick a winner. <laughs> I was looking at that bird and I was like, why is it flying so aggressively? Can you see it? No. It looks like it's really oh, like it's oh. flying towards us. Oh sh Are you okay? Come see Land if you have to! Be crazy! Do you want us to slow down? <laughs> it's really like I think it's hovering. So it's 7.30, we've just finished a beautiful, believe it or not, tuna curry. I know, it doesn't sound like it works, but like bloody it worked, it was really nice, it was, it was like, delicious. yeah, thanks. And now the wind's completely dropped out pretty much, so we're going to get this jib down uh, so it doesn't keep wearing on the spreaders, and then after that we'll drop the main probably, or we might keep the main up for stability. We'll just see how this affects the boat speed. It's very light wind and it's kind of really intermittent. There'll be a little bit of maybe say four and a half to five and a half knots and then it'll just kind of drop out and the sails will bluff heaps and then, so yeah, we'll just get it it's down. It's really inconsistent. Yeah. But we're doing five and a half knots with the motor on at the moment. So we'll see how that's affected once we pull all the sails down. Cause we might find that it actually hasn't been helping at all and we're just, <laughs> Putting wear and tear on it everything. It definitely is. I can feel a little bit of wind. Yeah. Anyway. Righto. Okay, let's do it. Nice one, baby. Well, we've made it on on time, anchored and ready to get into bed by 10.30. I'm already in bed. Phoebe's already in bed. She yells from bed. We're um, gonna be leaving tomorrow morning, first light, probably about 5.30.
and yeah, should arrive in Nelly Beach a little bit earlier than we arrived at Cape Upstart because we didn't leave today until about 11 o'clock. But yeah, rest up and catch you tomorrow.